Welcome to SEO Bootcamp. My name is Alan Wang. I've been doing SEO for over five years now, and there's been a lot of changes in the industry, which is why I updated the SEO Bootcamp to the current version. You can find our company at basketseo.com. This is our company uh, way back on Google. So there's two different types of results on Google. There's the pay-per-click advertising and the organic results. And so over here you can see the pay-per-click ads. So what happens here is like people will pay Google per click or per impressions. And so like every time someone clicks on the, one of the ads here on the side, you're going to pay anywhere from a couple cents to a couple dollars per click. So it doesn't guarantee a sale, it just guarantees people coming to your website. Over here are the organic results. So the first page will have the first 10 results. And those are our natural results where people's websites SEO are good and that's how they get to the first page, which is what we're going to talk about today, how people get to the first page organically. So this is our company on the first page of Google for the keyword term SEO Los Angeles. So we beat out other SEO companies to get to that first page. This is us on the on uh, the number two position on Bing, and this is us uh, on the first page for Yahoo. So let's start our SEO journey with how to analyze the site. So this is not just analyzing your site, but also analyzing your competition as well. So you can size up your competition and see how competitive your industry is. The first question is, what is your site about? Are you selling something? Is it a product? Are you selling a service? Are you trying to generate leads? Are you sort of trying to build a following or get voters or promote a charity? Who is your target audience? Are you looking for customers? Are your customers uh, in, within a certain industry? Are your customers other businesses or just normal regular people? Are you trying to get voters or people like, that like to donate to charity? Who, what is your audience looking for? What is your main source of income? Like, What is the purpose of your website? Like, If you're a bakery and your number one seller is wedding cakes, then that's probably what you want to focus a lot of your marketing on first because that makes you the most money. So let's talk about how much traffic is your site getting. There's different ways to estimate your traffic and one of the ways is through the Alexa tool. And so how do you check your Alexa traffic rank? You just go to alexa.com, type in your website and it'll give you your rank. For example, in the United in in the world, uh, Google's the number one website cuz you can see that they are rated number 1 in the United States which means that they get the most traffic out of anyone on the internet. Number two is Facebook and number three was YouTube. So if you're a brand new website, you're probably going to rank around 20 million or higher. As you start to become a more established website, you're probably ranked around four or five million. And then if you get to like the top 100,000, then you're doing really well. If you want an exact number about how many people are exactly coming to your website, then you want to install Google Analytics, which is a free tool you can install into your website. Just go to google.com slash analytics and they'll give you some sort of code that you can input into your website. Or if you're using a content management system or a CMS program like Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, or some sort of e-commerce website program, they'll usually have some place where you can enter your Google Analytics tracking code and it'll start attract, attaching that Google, Google Analytics code to all your different pages on your website. Or there'll be a plugin like in WordPress where you can enter your analytics code. I use a Google Analytics input WordPress plugin to do my Google Analytics on my WordPress websites. And then once you enter your code into your website, you can just go log into your Google Analytics account with your Gmail account 
and it'll tell you like how many visitors you're getting every day, what countries they're from, what keywords they're typing into Google to find up, find and end up on your website, what the bounce rate is, and it'll just give you a whole bunch of statistics so you can evaluate how many people are coming to your website, how they are finding you, whether it's through SEO or social media or, or paid advertising, and ways that you can improve on your, on your traffic. And uh, it'll give you an indication about if you're like hiring somebody for your marketing or is your marketing working? And you can track that by how many people are actually coming to your site. Another way to evaluate the health of your website is your Google page rank. So just go into Google and type into the Google query box, which is like that open box you type in your searches. And just type in Google page rank checker tool and they'll come up with a bunch of different websites that will tell you your page rank for free. And it's like, uh, like a logarithmic scale, so it goes from like zero to 10. If you're 10, then you're like the best in the world. If you're zero, then you're like a brand new website. If you're around like two or three, then you're like getting there and, and each, each rank gets progressively harder to get to. Then you wanna see how many backlinks do you have? So just go into Google and type in backlink checker tool and you can type in your website and it'll give you like a sampling of how many backlinks you have and give you like just like an estimate about how many backlinks you have. But you can also go to your competitor's website, type in their website into a backlink checker tool and also look at an estimate and a sample of their backlinks as well. So you can kind of see like what their backlink strategy looks like also. So there, there's two main things to think about when you think about SEO. One is your on-site optimization, and two is your backlinks. So what are backlinks? Every time a third-party site, website, or social media platform has a link from their website over to your website, that's one backlink. So that is like a vote because Google has these bots that crawl through websites and see what sites are linking to your website. So you can take an account like how many links does your website have? But more importantly, how trustworthy are these links? Like it's not just about how many backlinks you have, which is like the old school way to do SEO. What's more important now is what quality are these backlinks? It's better to have one good backlink than 500,000 terrible backlinks. So how do you judge the quality of a backlink? Like how relevant is that link to your industry? If you're a bakery and all your backlinks come from automotive repair websites and there's something wrong, there's something amiss, how old is your website? That's another uh, factor about the quality of your site and the quality of the backlinks. Another way to look at your, the quality of your site is like how fast does your website load? These are all things that can affect your, your page rank and the quality of your site and, and the ways you can affect the quality of your backlinks as well. So let's, we'll go into more into backlinks, the details of backlinks and the, and the Google algorithm updates later on in this lecture. But let's start with the part that you can control 100%, and that is your on-site optimization. So on-site optimization is about what does your website say about itself? You are telling Google and the Google bots what is your website about so they can put you in the right category and find the right people that are looking for what you offer. And the way that's done is through the, the coding, the HTML code, which is also your, called your page source. So if you like go through like Internet Explorer or Firefox or Google Chrome, you just right click on a website page and select view source and you can look at the HTML coding. If you use a CMS program like WordPress or Joomla or Drupal, they'll do that coding for you in the background. So the part that you want to 
tell Google what your site is about is within the, the title, the description, and the tags. So the title tag, the meta description, and the meta tags are three places that you can start by telling Google what your website is about. So you can also take a look at your competition's website as well and look at their source. And from looking at their title and their meta description and meta tags, you can kind of get a sense about what keywords they're going after as well. So how do you decide what keywords to go after? So let's start by brainstorming. So let's start with a list of around up to 100 possible keyword phrases. Your target audience might type into Google to find what you offer. So for example, if you're a bakery, someone might type in Los Angeles cakes or they might type in cakes Los Angeles. So the order of the words changes the keyword phrase. They might type in Los Angeles cake or they might type in Los Angeles cakes. So plural or singular also changes the keyword phrase. Or they might type in organic cake, gluten-free cake. So you can have different sort of adjectives that can change the keyword phrase or cheapest cakes, affordable cakes, high quality cakes, gourmet cakes, cakes gourmet. So you can see it's very easy to brainstorm a list of 100 possibilities of what people might type into Google to find what you offer. You take those words, single uh, spaced, and just type them in a row, uh, one phrase per line. You copy it, and then you, you paste it. So this is a website tool that can give you an idea about the different keywords that different websites are targeting. So you take your list of keyword phrases. Okay, well let's go through the list then. So you, as you can see here, like here's a, a brainstorm. Los Angeles cakes is different than cakes Los Angeles. So you change the order. You can make it singular. You can add adjectives. So you take that list of 100 keyword phrases and you paste it into the Google Keyword Planner. So you just go to adwords.google.com slash keyword planner. This tool is free. All you need to do is log in with your Gmail account. You, you plug that list into the keyword, keyword planner and they'll give you the actual phrases and synonyms of those phrases that people are actually typing into Google. And then that tool will tell you like how many people are searching for that keyword every month and they'll tell you like how competitive that keyword is, like high, medium, or low. But it's not just about the, getting the keyword with the most hits. You also have to check how competitive are those keyword phrases. Because you might, because the word cake might get millions of hits every month. And maybe Los Angeles cakes only gets 500 hits a month. But if you're a brand new website, the chances of you getting to the first page of Google for the word cake is almost zero. Because you gotta beat out so many people, so many companies that have been around for, for decades. You gotta beat out like Nabisco or Twinkie or her, like Denny's. Like the chances of you being a new website and getting to the first page for cake is, is pretty much nil. But the chances of you getting to Los Angeles cake then you're pretty much only competing against other people that are going after that keyword phrase, which would be much easier. And the people that type in Los Angeles cake are your clients because that's who you're selling cake to. You don't need people in New York finding your website because they're, they're not flying to LA to buy a cake from you. Unless you're shipping cakes. <laughs> but realistically, you want to target an audience that's going to convert. Because this is about making money, not just about getting hits. So how do you estimate how competitive a keyword is? There's different tools out there you can pay for. Another way you can do it for free is just go into Google, and type in the query box, all in title, open quotes, keyword phrase, end quote. So it would be like all in title, space, quote, Los Angeles cakes, end quote. And however many hits come up, 
is an estimate about how many people are competing for that same keyword phrase. So if there are 500 hits, then it's about 500 websites that are competing against you for, for, for that keyword phrase. If there's only three, three hits, then there's a good chance you can get to that first page possibly without even any, any backlinks because you only need to be top 10 to be on the first page. So this is what the, a version of the keyword planner looks like. You type in the keyword phrases here and it gives you some examples here of like different keyword phrases that people actually look for. Here are the average monthly searches, here's the competition. So let's go into the coding now. You pick your keyword phrases like, okay, I like the, the keyword phrase, Cakes Los Angeles, Best Cake, Bakery Los Angeles, and then you plug it into the title, which is like, in Google, you have like the title on top, and then you have like a short paragraph under it. That boldface title is the title tag, and the paragraph under it is the meta description. So the title tag is about around 12 words. And the way to format it is keyword phrase, keyword phrase, keyword phrase, company name. Because the words that show up first count for more. And nobody is really looking for your company name unless you're like a, a well-known brand. So you want to start with birthday cakes Los Angeles, comma, best cake, comma, baker Los Angeles, and then name of your, your shop, which is like little cake shop or whatever. And they have like plugins that, uh, and things like WordPress that will help you enter your title tags and your meta descriptions. And so the next step is your meta description, which is like that paragraph that shows up under the Google results. And this is not just about keyword phrases. This is also about sales copy. So sales copy is like a commercial and written format. You have to convince people or entice people to want to click on your website after they read your meta description. So you can include your keyword phrases in your meta description, but it has to make sense grammatically and it has to be like a commercial. So it can read something like, Cakes Los Angeles Maker Little Cake Shop is your best choice for birthday cakes, wedding cakes, and more. And you, then I include a phone number so they know it's like a real, a real company and not some spam site or some sort of spam blog. So I'm going after keyword phrases like Cakes Los Angeles, birthday cakes, wedding cakes. But it's also enticing people to want to click on it because we're the best. And then you have meta tags which doesn't necessarily help your SEO because that's what Google says in their YouTube account that meta tags don't really count towards your SEO. But at least it doesn't hurt you so you can just include some of the keyword phrases that you like and that you're trying to target into the meta description. I mean, I'm sorry, the meta tags. Then you can include these keyword phrases within the content of your website or blog. So you can include keyword phrases within the heading tags of, of your sites Every time you post a picture on your website, you can have like an alt image attribute that includes keyword phrases, which is like a description of your website, a description of the picture, I mean. You can italicize, bold, or underline your keyword phrases within your website content. You can include keyword phrases within the internal links like menus or footer menus or site indices. You could have the keyword phrase within the URL, like sitename.com slash keyword.html. This would be like littlecakeshop.com slash weddingcakes.html. Or you can be like weddingcakes.com or something like that. You could have it within the content of like the menu titles. You can put keyword phrases in bulleted lists. You can make the font larger for these keyword phrases. Then you can also submit your website to be indexed by these different search engines. And so you can do it for Bing or Google or Yahoo. And just, just type in submit URL within any of these search engines and it'll tell you where to submit your new website so they can index it. Or you can just do what I do and just let 
Google and Bing and Yahoo find your site naturally, either through the backlinks or just through crawling? So just go ahead and submit your site. Some SEO companies will charge you for this, but you can just do it yourself very easily. So let's talk about backlink strategy. So this is what's been giving people headaches and ulcers over the last uh, couple of years. There's been a lot of updates and there's a ton of misinformation out there, which is why I felt like it was important for me to give this lecture, to give people a true sense about how SEO is done, the psychology of the Google algorithm, and how to, most importantly, how do you avoid getting cheated by SEO companies? Because even if you want to pay other people to do it for you, it's really important for you to watch what they're doing so they don't mess up your backlinks and mess up your website, potentially forever. So the goal is to acquire links naturally and evenly over time. Like there's websites and some services that will sell you like 10,000 backlinks for $5. Even if they were like okay backlinks or at least links that won't hurt you, if you're getting 10,000 backlinks this month and then next month you get three backlinks, it looks funny. It doesn't look natural. So that's one way you can tip off these uh, web search engines like Google that you're doing something artificial. So your links should be attained consistently and organically because that's what naturally happens as your website starts to build credibility and more and more people visit your site, you'll start to just get back this naturally more and more over time. So don't go out and buy a thousand links pointing to your website at a time. It's not going to help you. In fact, these search engines don't even want you to buy links, period. So if you're buying links, you're already in this black hat or gray hat area already. Don't join any link swapping or link trading schemes. That's another tactic a lot of SEO agencies will, start, will, will try to sell you is like some sort of plugin that allows you to join some sort of community of link traders. Like that's one of the fastest way for you to get de-indexed off, off of Google or drop your website from page one down to page 50. Even if it helps you in the short term and you're on page one for six weeks, there's a good chance you might just drop out of existence in a couple of months. Don't spam message boards or article sites with bad or spun articles or duplicate content. So we'll talk about more about this later, but black hat SEO are things that you cannot do, that you should not do and you should avoid like the plague. There used to be this type of link called article backlinks where they had these different programs that would help you do it for you. Whereas like you write an article, you can submit it to article directories and they have a link at the bottom of your article to your website and that counts as one backlink as soon as they post an article. So they had all these like black hat SEO programs that would take an article and spin it, meaning they would write like a hundred different versions of that same article just by using a thesaurus that would just like substitute synonyms of different various words in your article to make a new article, even if it didn't make grammatical sense. So it would be like, we have the best cases in Los Angeles. It would also so all of a sudden become, we have good cake city, period. Like it'd be this weird sentence that doesn't make any sense grammatically. And they would rewrite the article and just upload it to like 2,000 article directors to get you these backlinks. So these updates devalue those types of backlinks. And don't duplicate content. Don't just take someone else's stuff, content, copy and paste it into your website. It's not gonna help. Don't join paid networks that will like um, give you links at a, at a low monthly fee. So how do you write and get good backlinks? So more important than trying to keep up with every single Google algorithm update I think it's more important to understand the psychology of like, what is Google, Bing, and Yahoo trying to do? What is their purpose of these updates? 
Their purpose is to provide a good user experience. People go into Google in search of something, and it's Google's goal to provide them with the best quality website for what those people, are, those users are looking for. So to do that, they want high quality websites that provide value for the people that are searching for exactly what you offer. So one of the ways that you can still get high quality backlinks is to write high quality original content and offer it to websites within your industry that would help their readers. So you can guest post to websites in your industry, high quality websites in your industry that, are, that have some authority. Offer them, you can like write a personal message to the webmaster or the owner of the company and let them know like I have an article that I wrote or can write that would provide value to your readers in this way. And, and you just connect with people and offer their readers value and that's how you get high quality backlinks. So it's a non-pushy personalized email and some of the blogs you can find in the internet that are quality, you can go to like myblogcast.com or postrunner.com and they'll have some like uh, blogs in different niches you can, you can talk to. You can do broken link building. So you can reach out to quality sites that have broken links and just let them know like, hey, you have a broken link here. And um, if you'd like, you can substitute that broken link with a link to my website, which, which actually works. So you can go to like brokenlinkbuilding.com and they can help you find sites with broken links. You can track brand mentions and so people are like mentioning your website and uh, not giving you a backlink. So you can talk to the webmaster like, hey, you, went, you mentioned my site. Um, if you'd like, you can put a backlink to my website here and that way people can find me. You can type into like high quality local directories like Yahoo Local, Yellow Pages, City Search, Google Local, Bing Local, Vmoz.org. These are all high quality websites. If you don't have a business address, you can make one. You can get like a, like a mailbox, not a PO box, but like a mailbox and use that for your business address. There's different services out there that will have like a receptionist and give you like a sort of like virtual office that you can use. So here's like some of the 55 largest local business directories. It's a listing. You can do some social bookmarking on some established sites. Don't go into any spam sites, but something like delicious or stumble upon. You can start listing your websites there. You can do article submission to like relevant, high quality article directories like, like these. Don't be posting poor quality articles to spam directories. You can do a press release syndication, but don't do press releases just to create backlinks. Like if you actually have something you want to say, or you actually have a, like a legitimate press release you want to syndicate, then then go ahead and do that as long as it's like good quality. You can submit to like high quality directories like DMOZ or directory.yahoo.com within your industry. These are like pools of different kinds of websites for different kinds of niches. So for a lot of these backlinks, there's like a good way, a bad way, and like an in-between way to do it. And so the good way is called white hat SEO. The bad way to do it is called black hat SEO. And when people are doing something in between, it's called gray hat SEO. So all the, the different various Google updates were devaluing and likely penalizing a lot of these types of backlink and spam tactics. So just like there were these programs that were like automatically submitting 
spun articles to article directories. There are also programs that were like spamming these link directories. And so you don't want to have too many of your backlinks just coming from link directories because it looks like one of those like spam programs are doing it for you. And you can still use direct link directories, just make sure they're high quality sites and within your niche. And, and don't do like 2,000 at a time, just, just do it uh, naturally and organically. You can do video links on like YouTube or Vimeo and different video sites. So what happens is you upload a video and within the description like in YouTube, like if you just type in like http colon slash slash www dot basketseo.com, it'll turn into like a clickable link under your video. And that's how you can get some social media links. Although these links are on social media platforms are uh, almost always not, do not, no follow links. No follow links are just telling these search engines not to count it as a, as a backlink. So it, it may or may not help you, but at least in general it doesn't hurt you. And you're driving traffic to your site from the social media platforms as well. So you can syndicate your video to all these different video sites and include a link back to your, your main website. True for all social media platforms. All these social media platforms offer you a way to like have a link somewhere to your website, whether it's in your profile or under content. If you're like an e-commerce, you can start listing your products in different sort of uh, product indices like Nextag or Google Shopping. You can ask your friends and connections to help you friends, family, employees, manufacturers, different affiliates companies that you work with and ask them for a backlink to your website. You can link bait people. So you can have some sort of like compelling content that drives people to want to click on it and link to it. You'll see that a lot on Facebook walls these days that would like, people have like link bait titles that pique your curiosity to make you want to click on it. You can do like white paper content, top 10 lists, make an infographic, make a printable resource, how-to guides, beginner guides, breaking news, top 10 lists, industry reports. So here's one way to make infographics is you go to pictochart.com and they can help you make an infographic. So you're basically baiting people to give you a backlink, especially if they share it. Don't be doing like these link exchange communities where you're just kind of like trading links with people haphazardly. Like instead you can just like email the webmaster saying how like your site could be useful to their visitors. You can get into a blog's favorite sites box. Don't be doing like link exchange networks where like these communities of people that trade links together because that's one way you can get banned from these search engines. And then people used to do these, this strategy called three-way link exchanges where they were like, a, site A gives site B a backlink, site B gives site C a backlink, and then site C will give site A a backlink. So it all looks like one-way one -way backlinks, but actually it's like a triangle. So that's called a three-way link exchange. That doesn't work either right now, so don't fall into that trap anymore either. That's an old-school tactic. Don't do mass blog commenting. Like, they used to have these black hat SEO programs that would massively post generic spam comments on different blogs. Like, hey, that was a great post. I appreciate the value and here's a link to my website. And so they would just like massively write all these spam comments. So all those, all this, these kinds of strategies, these black hat strategies are already, have already been devalued and possibly even penalized as well. So you want to avoid that kind of strategy now. If you just like, finding blogs within your niche and you're like manually and organically commenting, then don't be afraid to comment and leave, it, leave a link to your website. It's probably not a big deal. Don't be like spamming these like internet forums with like a bunch of different kind of fake profiles to have a link in your profile back to your website as backlinks or posting a bunch of spam uh, posts on these forums to give you backlinks as well. This was another black hat strategy done back in the day where they had these programs that would massively make all these fake accounts on forums to give you a backlink in the forum profile. So all these things have already been caught already by the, by the algorithms. 
you can take a look at your, your competitors' backlinks. So look at the top 10 websites in your industry and take a look at their backlinks. And maybe if they have a quality backlink, maybe you can get the same backlink, whether they did a, a guest post or got into the favorite boxes or a banner ad or something like that. You can see how your competitors are getting backlinks and kind of copy their strategy and get the same backlinks that they got. Just make sure their backlinks aren't black hat. Other ways to get backlinks are like through reviews or charities or the Better Business Bureau website. So let's talk about outsourcing. Like, there's a bunch of cons in the SEO industry because the SEO industry has a lot of money going back and forth. And I think most people don't even know what SEO stands for. Most people don't even know that SEO stands for search engine optimization. So that leads to a lot of con artists in the industry. Either people that are intentionally misleading people to get their money on a monthly basis, or people that just don't understand how SEO is different now and just doing old school tactics and charging you for it while it's hurting your website. So whether you wanna hire like US-based agencies or you're gonna outsource to a different country through these different outsourcing websites, you have to monitor what these people are doing. You have to check that these backlinks they're giving you are not black hat and won't penalize you in the future. Because right now, like, not only are people hiring SEO people to help their SEO, but people are hiring SEO agencies to undo the backlinks and undo the damage that other SEO agencies have done for them in the past. So now you're paying people to undo backlinks for you, and it's a big headache. So just avoid it. By avoid it by understanding the basics of SEO and just monitoring what these SEO agencies are actually doing for you. And I would filter these agencies before you hire them. Like ask them, who were your past clients? What kind of backlinks do you do? How much do you charge for these backlinks? And show me some backlinks. Show me some backlinks that you've given to other clients. And that way you can look at the backlinks, look at the quality of the backlinks, and see, does this match the psychology of what the Google algorithm is looking for? Are these backlinks high quality, or is this SEO company just doing spam? And I would tell you that a lot, if not most, of these SEO people are doing artificial backlinks because it's just easier and cheaper. And they'll give you short-term results and they don't care if you quit in six months because they just get new clients all the time. I might be a bit, like a pessimist about this, but I just wanna give you the worst case scenario so you don't get taken advantage of when you're, when you're out there in the industry. So avoid blackhead SEO, that's a given. So here are some of the ways to get banned from Google. There's something called keyword stuffing, where all you're doing is taking this keyword and just stuffing it into the pages as often as possible. Like you're posting Los Angeles cakes a thousand times on your front page. Just to try to get to the first page for, for that keyword phrase. It's not gonna work. The Google bot will catch that almost instantly and just ban you from Google. And then You'll have to manually reapply to get manually reevaluated at any time that they want to possibly get added back into Google again, if, if ever. Don't be doing off-screen off text. And so like, if your margins are like 800 pixels and you post a bunch of keywords like 2,000 pixels off to the right so they can't see it, that's gonna get you banned from Google also. You can't be hiding text like your background of your website is blue and then you make the, the text the same color blue so people can't actually see the text, that's not gonna work either. You can't hide keywords. That's another way to get banned from Google also. Don't use any automated programs. So there's all these different programs out there that are black hat SEO programs that will make a bunch of backlinks for you automatically and submit you to like 2,000 link directories and 2,000 article directories and spin content for you. Just, just avoid all those things. Those things are so old school. They don't work anymore, and likely they're gonna penalize you also. 
this used to be one strategy where like people would make fake sites do some sort of backlink strategy to these peripheral sites and then do one outgoing link from the peripheral site to your main website. That's called a link wheel. And that probably doesn't really work anymore either. Unless you're making some like high quality good sites, that sort of artificial strategy is not, good, not really gonna work. At least, even if it works in the short term, eventually they're gonna catch you. That's just the, the new philosophy that I have is it's like, you might get away with some sort of artificial strategy in the short term, but in the long run, there's a good chance you're just gonna get penalized anyways, because Google has the, the some of the smartest software engineers in the world, and so they'll figure out a way to, to catch it. So just don't do it. So it's not just about search engine optimization, there's different ways to do internet marketing, like there's paid advertising, like pay-per-click on Yahoo, Bing, Facebook, you can get banner ads, solo ads, and then there's social media. So social media is like YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Meetup, Facebook, and the new one is Periscope. And all these social media platforms have links that you can include like either in the description of the content that you have or within your social media profile. In general, these backlinks are no follow links, meaning that there's code that, said that says that this link is no follow, telling Google, Bing, and Yahoo not to count it as a backlink because they don't want people spamming their social media platform to get these like fake backlinks. But at least it doesn't hurt, and so it could help theoretically, and it drives traffic and, and, and users to your website, so it's definitely important to do. I think in marketing, in order to brand yourself and your company, you want to do all types of marketing. So it can be like internet marketing, SEO, pay-per-click, paid advertising, social media. You want to do like traditional advertising. It could be like newspapers, magazines, radio, TV. You can do like direct marketing, like trade shows. There's, there's a lot of different ways to do marketing these days and you kind of want to do a, like a little bit of everything in some format or another. So each social media platform is like done a different way, have their own strategy of doing it, and have their own terms of service also. So you have to like make sure you follow their rules or, or risk losing your account. Um, and then like for different types of industries, different types of social media platforms are better for your type of industry. For example, if you're like a service industry or a professional or like a restaurant, Yelp is, my, is, is, is a platform that will probably make a lot, if not the majority of your income and new clientele. So you basically just want to focus on whatever makes you the most money. So here's some examples of paid advertising. This is where you're like paying per click, like on Google, Bing, Yahoo, LinkedIn, Facebook, banners, solo ads. So both social media and paid advertising will be a different lecture, separate from this lecture. But I just wanted to give you a sense how all these strategies tie together into a cohesive, effective marketing strategy. Because the goal is to make money, not just to be like the best on some type of marketing. And you really have to have a a bigger picture of the overall strategy to understand how everything works together. So let's wrap this lecture up with the different updates to Google, starting with the Panda update that came around in February 2011. The goal of the Panda update to the Google algorithm was to lower the rank of low quality sites and return higher quality sites near the top of, of Google. So CNET reported that surge in the rankings of different news websites and social networking sites and a drop in rankings for sites containing large amounts of advertising. So some of the ways that the Panda update penalized people is if your website angers users, provide a horrible user experience, you have low quality content, you deceive your users anyway. Poor user experience. 
If you had duplicate content, you might get penalized, low quality, poor grammar. You have a horrible ad to content ratio. It means your, your, your site was like a spam site. You just had too many ads compared to actual high value content. You had a lot of broken links in your site. You might get devalued, deranked. So here are some questions you can ask yourself that the Panda update was looking at. Would you trust the information presented in, in your article? Is your content written by an expert or enthusiast who knows the topic well, or is it more shallow in nature? Does the site have duplicate, overlapping, or redundant articles? Would you be comfortable giving your credit card information to this site? Does, the, does your content have spelling, stylistic, or factual errors? So you can see the quality of your content matters a lot after the Panda update. Are the topics driven by genuine interests of the readers of the site? Or are they just writing content just to like, try to rank for it? Is the article original content? Does your content provide substantial value when compared to other websites? So you can see it's important to become an authority and like a guru of your industry, providing your readers with real value. How much quality control is done on, the, on your content? Does the article describe both sides of the story? Is your site recognized as an authority on the topic? Is your content mass produced or outsourced to a large number of creators and spread across a large network of sites so they don't want you doing that sort of article spamming where you're just spamming the same article to a bunch of different sites? Was the article edited well or is it sloppy? Do you trust the information on your site? Would you be recognized in the, as an authority mentioned by name? So how do you recover from the Panda update if you got penalized? You gotta start improving and adding good quality content to your website. Remove any scraped content, meaning like if you're just cutting and pasting material from other websites onto your website, then you gotta take it off. If you have any removed content, make sure you do a redirect so there aren't any broken links in your website. And just r remove any broken links on your website. Let's talk about the Penguin update around April 2012. So they want to penalize things like overly spammy anchor text and links from low quality websites. They are lowering ranks of people that are breaking the Google's website webmaster guidelines. So they're they're basically penalizing people that were doing artificial backlinking strategies that were, were all spam. So things you, you had to avoid were like doorway pages that are like, those are like websites that are designed to target different SEO keywords that just redirect people from that website over to your other website, which is where you want people to end up. So you're, you're, people are like, were like creating websites that just targeted SEO keywords that just push people and push traffic over to like your company website. And you had to avoid that. You wanna to avoid too many ads or too little content above the fold, which is like the place, the fold is like where people look at your home page without having to scroll down. Don't article spin to other blogs. We talked about that already. Careful of like link wheels and link hubs, blogging networks, three-way links. We talked about that already. You should probably just avoid those things. Avoid like blogging networks, spinning content, link wheels. We talked about that already. Don't be doing like automated blog commenting or automatic form posting programs. Have like a high quality website, invest in good in-depth content with a few great links. So even if you get a backlink, you want websites that are high quality content, that are legitimate authorities in your industry, and that don't have too many outgoing links, because then it looks like a, like a paid advertising site or like a spam site. 
You want to have good accessibility to your site with relevance, good reputation, user experience in your website. You want to get links from real sites and not just like sites that are just existing to like sell people backlinks. If you want to see how toxic a link is, you can just go to this tool right here, linkresearchtools.com, and it'll tell you whether a, a link is toxic or not. The Google link disavow process allows you to like uh, separate yourself from these sort of like bad links. And uh, Website Magazine has an article about how to do that at wsm.co png links. If you get de-indexed, you can undo all the, all the damage onto your site and then resubmit through to Google through the Google reconsideration process. And that website will tell you how to resubmit your site to Google through the reconsideration process, which is no guarantee they will or will not accept you back into Google if you got banned. Let's talk about the Hummingbird update around August 2013. So this helps Google's algorithm determine which sites are the most relevant to the users of Google. And they did this through improving the understanding of the contextual terms that people type into the search query box. So it's not just about like nouns, it's also about what's happening around that noun. Like, buy Los Angeles cakes, or people that are looking to buy a cake, not just people that want to go to a blog and read about how to bake a cake or something like that. There's just like specific context within those keyword phrases that, that the hummingbird is recognizing. So that helps you in your strategy where like, if you're selling cakes to people, you might want to sell, you might want to target keywords that are more focused, like buy Los Angeles wedding cake which will convert a lot better if somebody gets to your site through that keyword phrase because those are people looking to buy a wedding cake specifically. Rather than just targeting general keywords like wedding cake, which could be anything. It could be from people that want to just look at cakes to other chefs that are looking to bake cakes and find motivation. When all you're really looking for are customers. So here are some of my citations. If you're including um, Website Magazine, I didn't list that in, on there. And it, I do look, look at a lot of the different blogs and forums as well to see what other people in the industry are doing because this is a constantly changing game. And what I say today might not apply tomorrow, which is why it's more important to understand the psychology of what these search engines want more so than the actual technical stuff about how to do it because how to do it today may not be how it's done tomorrow. And doing it wrong today, or doing it right today, might end up being a penalty in the future as well. So there's, there's really no guarantee in this game. But if you understand the psychology, I think you'll be safe. You understand the fundamentals, you can start doing it yourself or even charging other people to do it for them. If you were to start with two sources to start learning SEO on your own more in depth, um, one source that I like is SEO for Dummies. That's like that yellow colored book that they make for everything, like the like Barnes and Noble and stuff. Those those companies usually publish only like really established people in the industry. It's why I like their stuff. It's very simple and easy to follow for, for new users. And another source I like is Lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, and it's a it's a month month subscription. So you can subscribe to it for a month and just cancel the next month. And they have a bunch of streaming video about how to do SEO, and they'll teach you other stuff like how to do WordPress and pretty much anything you want to learn how to do online, they'll, they'll have some sort of video about it. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly at alanwingmd.com. You can submit through my uh, contact form or you can subscribe to my newsletter. And, and uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and as long as I have time, I'll, I'll call you back and answer any questions for you.